Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be showing you how to play Dice Hospital Community Care, a new set of expansions for Dice Hospital. There are three expansions inside that can all be played individually or you can combine them together in all sorts of mixtures. There's the City expansion, the Investments expansion and the Maternity expansion. There are also rules included for a brand new solo mode, the Automa mode. This is everything that's included in the box here. If you do have the Deluxe Edition, you'll have some extra components like a helicopter mini, wooden intake tokens, things like that. But whichever version you've got, the rules will be the same. If you'd like to skip to a particular section of the expansion, then there will be timestamps available in the description or in the timeline itself, so you can skip around at your own leisure. But without any further ado, let's get into the city expansion. For the city expansion, you'll need the city tiles, the intake tracker board, an intake marker for each player, a paramedic meeple for each player, player order tokens up to the number of players, city bonus tiles, and of course, the helicopter token. We start off the setup as normal with a hospital board for each player. I'm showing a two player game in this example. So we have our nurses and score tokens and things, but instead of setting up the ambulances as normal with the drafting that's in the base game, each player gets an ambulance card in front of them instead, and each player also gets the paramedic meeple of their color. In the next step, as well as placing the score track and each player gets a score marker on it, you also need the new intake tracker board and an intake token for each player on that as well. Then we need to create the city grid, so you'll need the city tiles. The size of the city changes based on the player count, so for this two player example, it's going to be a 3x4 city, so 12 tiles. For three players, that would be a 4x4, so 16 tiles. And then for four to five players, it's a 5x4 five city, and you'll need all 20 tiles. Now you select the tiles at random, but if any of the tiles you've picked show a pink die placement spot, you need to put that tile face down because those pink die spaces are only used when you combine the city expansion with the maternity expansion. You build the city one row at a time from top to bottom and each row from left to right. The first tile in the top left needs to be rotated clockwise until the right and bottom of the tile show off a road. When you place the next tile, if necessary, rotate it so the left side matches the right side of the previous tile, if you can. And then carry on rotating if you need to and if you can. For the next row, you want to rotate the tiles if necessary to maximize the number of matching sides with the tiles you've already placed. So if I place this one here, I want to rotate it so as many roads as possible are connected to other roads. And when you've finished, you should end up with something like this. Now just as a quick note, I set this up at random, but I have ended up with three tiles on that top row there that aren't connected to any other part of the city. This is possible, but it's a bit of an outlier. Blame the shuffler, right? I've just put it on its side so it fits in the camera better. Any road pointing to the outside of the city now becomes a city entrance, which is a space where a player can place their ambulance. Then we can keep setting up the game as normal until after step seven. So we'd have our tiles and cards and meeples all set up. You then need to grab the city bonus tokens, shuffle them all up and make a pile out of them and leave space for a discard pile. Then you set up the dice bag as normal. So in a two player game, that's gonna be six dice of each color removed from the bag. Each player gets their starting patients set to three, four and five as usual. But then after that, the first player needs to draw, roll and place a new die on each and every city tile, starting in the top left corner until every city tile has one die on it. Now, anytime you roll a two, it finally happened. You draw a city bonus token and place it face up on the same tile as that patient. This also happens when patients in the city suffer neglect and drop down from a three to a two, they gain a token. Any player that admits a patient of value two also gets that token. And always remember to re-roll ones and sixes as normal, so there are only patients of values two to five in the city. So now we're all set up, let's get into playing the city expansion. Phase one is patient intake, and this is completely changed from the original game. There's no drafting, just drifting our ambulances around the city. In phase one, we're now going to take turns to each collect three patients from the city. In the first round only, we have ambulance placement. You need to pick a city entrance. Remember city entrances or these roads that point out to nowhere? Pick a city entrance and place your ambulance there and your paramedic next to it. You do that in player order, each choosing a different city entrance. 
In future rounds, you will be able to move your ambulance around based on the turn order, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. In the first round, we would now go to dice collection. In player order, we will each collect three dice from the city. First off, put your paramedic in the tile adjacent to your ambulance. If there's a patient there, you must collect that patient. And if there's a city bonus token there, you place that next to your ambulance. Then you can move your paramedic to any city tile that's connected by a road. So I would have the choice of all three of these patients. So if I wanted a lot of choice of city bonus tokens and uh, perhaps some difficult patients, I could collect all of these. And you repeat these steps until you have collected three patients. Remember, even if you're right next to a tile, but they're not connected by a road. So if I was on here, for example, and I really wanted this green three just above me, if there isn't a road connected to it, you are not allowed to move there. Then in turn order, the other players would also do this. But remember, if you move your paramedic onto a space that hasn't got a patient, you don't claim anything. So in this way, you might have a bit more choice in the path that you take because you only stop when you have ended up with three patients. Once you do have three patients, your paramedic returns to the ambulance. Then everyone has to pick one of their city bonus tokens to keep, put that one next to your hospital, possibly with some more that you've claimed earlier, and then discard the rest. Between each player's turn, if a row or column of city tiles ends up empty, you need to refill it, drawing and rolling one at a time, re-rolling your ones and sixes, so that row or column is full for that player's turn. And if a row and column become empty at the same time, you replenish both. Now we need to total up the value of the dice in our ambulances and this is going to determine player order. There are city bonus tiles with minus twos on them that you could now use to adjust your total dice value. So my total would be four, six, eight. So I would place my intake marker on the eight and Marty's would be five, 10, 15. So he'd go all the way to the top. After all the players have done this, we can work out the turn order for this round. The player with the lowest total takes player order token number one and claims the helicopter. The player with the next lowest claims token two and so on and so on from lowest total to highest. If there's a tie, so both players markers are on the same space, they take turn order tokens in the order they are sitting in, starting from the top. So in this case, it would be reversed. In future rounds, our turn order will determine the order in which we get to move around our ambulances. Starting with the first player, you can choose to move your ambulance 0, 1 or 2 city entrance tiles clockwise or anti-clockwise around the edge of the city to an unoccupied entrance. Each corner tile can just be treated as one space for these movement purposes. And spaces with other players' ambulances or tiles without entrances are completely skipped and don't count towards your total. So for one movement point, I could go there. And for two movement points, I could skip all the way over here. Now, the first player is granted the helicopter token and they can use the helicopter instead of their ambulance, and they can place it on any city tile that's not claimed by another player, even tiles without city entrances, or the tiles in the center. It's a helicopter after all. After we've all done claiming patients, they come from our ambulances to our hospitals, and phase two of the game happens in the exact same way as the base game. In phase three, when we activate our hospitals, you have the extra choice of using your city bonus tokens. The minus two is just for the player intake phase, but we also have tokens for each color that will improve a patient of that color by two steps, and the patient will count as treated for that round. There's a gray that can be any color of patient, but only treats them one step. And we also have this token that for one round only can be used as if it was a nurse meeple. Once used, city bonus tokens go into the discard pile. In phase four, all of your untreated patients suffer neglect. But in the city expansion, all of the patients still in the city suffer neglect as well. They will all drop in value by one step. So from three to two, five to four, you know the drill. And if this one dropped one more space, just for this example, they would become a fatality. And fatalities are distributed to the players in reverse turn order. So the player, so if there was one fatality, the token would go to the player that's last in turn order. And if there were more fatalities, you would keep handing them out. So if one patient died in our two player game, Marty would get it. If two patients died, would each get one? If there are more fatalities than the number of players, then you keep distributing them in the same order until all of the tokens have been distributed. So there's another potential advantage of being earlier in turn order. And remember in this step that any patients that went from a three to a two because of neglect will now gain a city bonus token, which can be collected if you choose to admit that patient. Phases five and six happen exactly the same, and so does end game scoring. There's uh, more opportunities for fatality tokens, of course, and your unused city bonus tokens are not worth any points at the end of the game, so get them used while you can. And that is the city expansion. Now let's have a look at the investments expansion. 
For the investment expansion, you will need the supplemental intake board, the new specialist cards, this new administrator card, the eight new department tiles, not the big stack of pink ones, the investment action board, and all these little investment tokens in each of the three colors. Also included are the maternity investment action board and 14 maternity investment tokens. These are of course used if you're combining the maternity expansion and the investment expansion. For setup, step one happens as normal. In step two, we get an ambulance for each player plus one, but in the investment expansion, we need the supplemental intake board which goes underneath the two highest numbered ambulances. In rounds one to four, this side is up, and in rounds five to eight, you'll flip it and this side will be up. During step three of the setup, you place the investment action board and make sure it's on the right side for your player count. There's a side for two to three players and four to five players. And then find and separate the investment tokens for each color, shuffle them all up and place them in a face down pile on the board. Then for the extra components like the rooms and the cards, shuffle them with those from the base game and then deal out an additional room and specialist. So there'll be rooms and specialists equal to the number of players apart from in a five player game where there will still be four of each out. And finally, the hospital strategist administrator is shuffled in with the other administrators. Now for the game itself, the intake phase is changed a little bit. It's similar, the first player will draw three dice out of the bag for each ambulance that's out there, but in rounds one to four, they'll draw an additional die. Remember, ones and sixes are re-rolled. Then you place the dice onto the ambulances in numerical order, going from lowest to highest. So the highest number die will always end up on the supplemental intake board. Now in rounds five to eight, this changes a little bit because there are now two spaces on this intake board. So you'll roll two extra dice instead of one, fill the ambulances up as normal, but you'll fill up the second ambulance. Then the next die along will go on the supplemental intake board, fill the next ambulance up, and the final die will go underneath it on the supplemental intake board again. Same as in the base game, if there is a tie for where certain dice should go because there's too many of a particular number uh, on the ambulances or the supplemental intake board, the first player decides. Now, no matter which round, if a player chooses an ambulance that's above the supplemental intake board, they must take the die from that space as well. Now in phase two, the investment phase where we get all of our new stuff, there is a new step after all of the usual specialist or room improvements, the invest step. Starting with the first player and going clockwise, everyone has the option of placing one of their meeples, it can be a nurse or a specialist, on an available space of the investment action board to get an investment token. Now in a two or three player game, each space can only have one meeple on it each round. And in a four to five player game, each space can have up to two meeples on it. After putting a meeple on an action space on the investment action board, you look at the top two markers from that pile, choose one to keep and put the other one at the bottom of the draw pile. After collecting an investment token, it has to immediately go on a department of your hospital, unless you have got the particular specialist that is allowed to get these investment upgrades. Each department tile has space for up to two investment markers. Once you've placed an investment marker, it can't be moved unless you are specifically told that you can. If you choose to trade in a department for a blood bag and that department has an investment marker on it, you lose any investment markers there and you don't get any extra benefits. You just lose them. The hospital activation phase is the same, but things happen in a particular order. So if I was to activate this pharmacy, for example, the first thing that happens is the default healing effect of this department. So it would heal one green patient one step. So I could turn this three into a four, for example. Then any investment token effects would kick in. It's optional, you don't have to use them, but I could increase a red die and a different green die one step each. Then comes the default healing ability of the specialist used. So I've used the anesthetist. And whenever the anesthetist heals a red patient, they also heal a different red patient by one step. And then any investment marker effects on the specialist themselves. Now, all these extra effects can make the game a bit more complex. So for your first game or so, it might be a good idea for everyone to take this in turns and just go through all of the effects just to make sure everyone's getting it right. Now in phase four, everything's the same. But in phase five, when we discharge patients, you do not get five bonus points if you empty all of your wards when we're playing with the investment expansion. In phase six, when we do the shift change, as well as all of your meeples coming back from their various departments, any meeples that you placed on the investment action board will also come back. There are no changes to end game scoring, and there's a glossary in the rulebook for all of the new effects of these investment marker tiles. And that is the investment expansion. Let's move on to the maternity expansion. 
For the maternity expansion, you will need these two new administrators, the maternity consultant and Jean Dubousset, the maternity specialist cards, the maternity department tiles, basically the pink things. You have these pediatric ward chevrons. You've got mother dice, tiny baby dice, pink specialist meeples, and the midwife die for some nice midwifery. In the setup, players start with an additional nurse each, so four instead of three, and each player also gets one pediatric ward chevron face down underneath each of their wards. After step five, when we've set up the departments and specialists, you create a separate deck of maternity specialists and departments, and based on your player count, add them to the display. In a two player game, there is just one maternity specialist and department on show. All of the player counts, there are two each. In addition to whichever normal departments and specialists you would have on display. When you make the general supply of the specialist meeples, add the pink specialist to them, and also put the pink dice into the display as well. They do not go in the back. Now, in addition to their normal three starting patients, each player also starts with a mother die in a ward on her own, set to value four. Then flip the chevron tile underneath the ward the mother is in to make room for the baby, who is also set to value four. Now the mother die and the infant die are separate patients, and any healing effects that you use just affect one of them. They're affected by any of your grey abilities, plus all of the new pink abilities from the maternity components. And finally, pop your two new administrators in with the rest, shuffle them up and deal them out as normal. Now let's talk about changes to the rules in play. So when we do patient intake, rather than the first player drawing dice equal to the number of spaces on the ambulances, you draw fewer from the bag and replace them with mother dice instead. There's a table in the rules that will tell you based on your player count, but in a two player game, you get seven from the bag and two mother dice, rather than just nine from the back. Gather them all together and roll them, and place them largely as usual, re-rolling ones and sixes. And it's actually worked out quite nicely here because there is a restriction. Each ambulance can only have one mother die each. If you were in a situation where you would normally have to have two mother dice on the same ambulance, you would just put them on the next ambulance along temporarily ignoring the ascending rule for placing the dice on the ambulances. Only one mother per ambulance. If you choose an ambulance with a mother die on it, the mother has to be placed in a ward without any other mothers in it. So you can only have up to four mothers in your hospital at any point. If you've already got four mothers in your hospital, you're not allowed to choose an ambulance with a mother die in it. If you have to, you know, maybe you're in a two player game and the other person has picked the only ambulance without a mother die in it, choose one of those ambulances anyway and substitute the mother die for one drawn randomly from the bag and set to the value that the mother die was at. Whenever you collect a mother die, you need to flip over the pediatric ward chevron underneath the ward you placed the mother in. And this gets flipped face down again when the mother and infant have been discharged. Now for each mother die that you add to your hospital, you need to roll the midwife die. And this is going to tell you how many babies the mother had, because it could be twins, or it could just be one baby, of course. Grab that many infant dice and place them in that pediatric ward underneath the mother, and they are set to value four. As with the base game, if there aren't enough spaces to admit new patients, then you have to remove existing patients, which now become fatalities. You are never allowed to choose mother or infant dice as the patients to be removed. In phase two, hospital improvement works in the same way, but you've now got more options with the maternity departments and specialists. And when we activate our hospitals, as well as the new fancy abilities that these new cards and tiles can bring, each paediatric ward has its own ability and space for a nurse meeple, which will treat one pink die one step. That could be a mother or an infant. And if you place a specialist in there, its ability triggers as normal. When discharging pink dice, although the mother and infant are separate dice when it comes to treating them, they must be discharged together by being healed to seven or higher in the same round and being placed in the discharge lounge together. If you just fully heal one of them, so say you got the mother to seven, for example, you could place the die underneath the ward temporarily just to show that she's healed and the infant still needs to be healed so they can be discharged. If you manage to do that in the same round, brilliant, pop them both in the discharge lounge. But if you don't manage to treat the pair, in this example, the mother would come back into the ward at six and would need to be healed again in the next round, along with the infant to be discharged. And an extra rule on color changes, you cannot change the color of a die to or from pink, only red, yellow, and green. Pink is exempt from all color changery. In phase four, when we deal with neglected patients, unhealed mothers will only suffer neglect if they share a ward with other patients. So this mother here, even if she wasn't treated, would stay at a six because she's on her own. This mother here would go down to three, but 
the mothers will never become fatalities, and so can't drop below value 1. Remember, you're not allowed to move your dice around in your hospital unless you're making room for a new mother die, because only one mother can go on each ward. It's an extra part of the puzzle managing all this space you've got available. In the neglect phase, infants do not drop due to neglect ever, and they will never drop in value for any other reason either. For discharging dice, although the mothers and infants have to be discharged together, they count as separate patients which can really increase your score because you want to discharge as many patients together as you can. So you could now discharge up to 20 dice per round, and there is a new table in the expansion rulebook showing you all the marvellous points you could get. When you're using the maternity expansion, you have to empty your entire hospital, including all the paediatric wards, to score your bonus 5 points. And remember, normal patients when discharged go back in the bag, Mothers and infants go back to the general supply, never in the back. If at the end of the round, through discharging the mother and infants, you've got an empty paediatric ward, flip it back face down. And you can't use the healing effect again until you've admitted another mother. And there are no new changes to the endgame scoring either. And that is the maternity expansion. There are all sorts of combinations and interactions between the expansions, a couple of extra bits of setup, or one or two new rules that apply, but I'll leave you to have a look at those in the rulebook for yourself based on the particular combination you're trying. Maybe you're going to combine them all together for one humongously thinky dice hospital. But for now, let's take a look at the Automa. The Automa gives you a new way of playing solo. For this, you set up as if it was a two-player game, except the Automa doesn't need a hospital board or any starting patients. All the Automa needs are the two Automa decks and its first player tiles. The small deck is the decision cards. Shuffle all these up. Your hospital cards are split up into different difficulties, level one, two, and three. There's simple with one Automa on them. There's normal with two Automas, and there's difficult with three Automas. You need to separate each difficulty, draw three from each level, and then make up your deck. So grab all of the ones, shuffle them all up together, and draw three out of the four. Then the same with the twos, shuffle them up, Draw three, and the same with the threes. The cards you removed can go back. The cards you removed can go back to the box. You're not going to be needing them. But the nine you picked now all get shuffled up together as one big deck. From this deck, you need to lay them out in a lovely neat row, oh, or a messy row if you want, I suppose. And from that row, which uh, no, I haven't left enough space on camera for, turn over the first card in your row. And so there are now eight cards remaining, one for each round of the game. You are the first player, so you get the first player token, and you put the autumn of first player tiles nearby. Now. You, as the player, play as normal, but when it comes to the Automa's turn, they play by their own rules, they're mavericks in that way. You set up the ambulances as normal, but if there are any conflicts over which dice should go on which ambulance, even if you're not the first player, you make those decisions. The Automa doesn't really mind. I can't leave it like this, I've got to neaten it up a little bit. It's not all one big row, but we can imagine. Now, when it comes to the Automa deciding which ambulance to take, that's a decision, so we're going to need the decision deck. Now, if the Automa is the first player, you just flip over the decision card, look at the patient intake section here, and they will take the ambulance corresponding to the first number in that section. So here, they would choose ambulance number three. After they've picked, you can take yours. If you're the first player, choose your ambulance, then flip over the decision card. The Automa will try and take its first choice, but if that's not available anymore, it will go for its second choice instead. Place its claimed dice near its cards. Assign the first player as usual. The Automa does get a blood bag if it takes or stays first player. Then we have hospital improvement. So if Automa is the first player, you flip their leftmost card face up. The top of the card here, see the two hospital improvement section, tells us what it's going to do this round. And it's basically going to remove things. It's going to take options away from us. In this case, it removes a specialist and a department. Or actually, for a two-player game, I should have set up. First player has the choice of putting an extra specialist or room out in a two-player game. So it's basically whichever one you decided to have as extra in setup you will have as your choice. Then you place an Automa first player tile over this section of its hospital card. This means that the Automa can complete this card more easily, but will get fewer points for doing so. If you are the first player, you just make your improvement choice as normal, and then flip over the Automa's hospital card, and you don't place the first player token on there. In phase three, we do hospital activation, so you do all of your normal thinky stuff, and the Automa will assign its dice to its cards. So you look at its leftmost face-up card to see if any of its spots can be filled in by the dice you just drafted. So we have a green one for this spot, a red one for this spot, doesn't have a yellow, so it can put the red on the next space along. It doesn't matter which values go in which spot, just the colour. There are grey spots on some of the cards, 
Those spaces are wild and can have dice of any colour. And because we go from left to right, if multiple dice could go in a grey spot, you just decide randomly. Once you've put all possible dice on the leftmost card, you move on to the next card along until all of the Automa's dice have been placed. If the Automa has any blood bags at this point, it will use them as wild dice and place them on empty spaces. Doesn't care about the colour that the spot used to be, just places a blood bag there and it counts as filled. They will place blood bags on grey spots, but they'll try to place them on coloured spots first if they can. Keep going until the Automa has used all of its blood bags. The Automa never leaves patients unattended, so their patients will never suffer neglect. And the Automa will discharge patients from cards that have all of the spaces covered by either dice or blood bags. So it's just one patient away from finishing this card off. It would discharge all of those dice and it would gain nine points because this section was not covered by a first player token. If it was to do this second card along, it only needs three dice, but it would not get the extra points for completing the other side. Dice that the Automa discharges go back to the bag as normal. Blood tokens go back to the supply. If the first player tile was on a card that got discharged, it goes back to the pile. And then the card that got completed goes back to the box. Finally, in shift change, if you are the first player, you decide which pile is going to have two in it, either specialists or departments for the next round. If the Automa is the first player, draw the next card from the decision deck and the Automa decides what the extra thing is going to be. So in this case, it would be an extra specialist card. The game lasts eight rounds, just like the normal game. Calculate the points as normal that the Automa and yourself have earned along the way. There's a point for every blood bag left over for you or the Automa, minus two points for every fatality token that a player has. Although of course, the Automa isn't going to have any fatalities. And whoever gets the most points wins. And there are some additional rules in the expansions rulebook for adjusting the difficulty up or down to get it just right for you. So there we go. That was how to play Dice Hospital, the community care expansion. I hope that's cleared some things up for you. If you've got any questions, queries or comments, leave them below and I will do my best to get back to you as quick as possible. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to stick around, there are many, many playthroughs on this channel. There's over 400 of them, including one for the original Dice Hospital. Uh, I think it's for the prototype when it was on Kickstarter. And I'm sure over time there will be one coming for the community care expansion. And hey, you could subscribe and like and stuff, but hey, I'm not in charge of you. Do what you like. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone.